In the age of digital currency, banks are no longer robbed. Instead, crypto exchanges, wallets, and networks are hacked. And there have been some major heists, even as recent as a few weeks ago. But hacks aren't the only danger for keeping your crypto secure. If your truck is being used in these protests, your corporate accounts will be frozen. Earlier in 2022, the Canadian government froze the crypto accounts of truckers who were protesting vaccine mandates. And both Kraken and Coinbase CEOs have admitted that if a government were to require something similar of them, they would be forced to comply. Block's new hardware Bitcoin wallet, though, aims to protect a person's Bitcoin against hacks, government-imposed sanctions, and the like. In this video, we'll dive into Block's impossibly simple yet safe approach to building a hardware wallet and how it is utterly unique. Block has shown their innovation and prowess in hardware design when they first launched a revolutionary credit card reader in 2012 that let anyone with a phone easily accept credit card payments. Will they be able to build a revolutionary new product again with this new Bitcoin wallet? Let's find out. Because it's called a crypto wallet, you might think your crypto wallet is where your cryptocurrency is stored, similar to how your physical wallet is where your physical currency is stored. But that's technically incorrect. In fact, your cryptocurrency actually lives on the blockchain, not your wallet. Instead, your wallet holds the keys which can unlock and give access to your cryptocurrency. There are two main types of wallets, hot wallets and cold wallets. Hot wallets are software wallets that are connected to the internet. Cold wallets are hardware wallets that are disconnected from the internet. Since hot wallets are connected to the internet, it's convenient to access your funds to send or sell your cryptocurrency. However, because they are connected to the internet, they are more susceptible to being hacked. Cold wallets or hardware wallets are not connected to the internet and therefore safer from being hacked, but it can be inconvenient to access your funds and send cryptocurrency. To do so, you need to connect your cold wallet to a hot wallet first. So. Many use cold wallets to store large amounts of crypto they won't be touching frequently. But there are lots of issues that can come up with wallets. Imagine you lose your wallet, or the phone your software wallet is on gets stolen, or your hardware wallet gets damaged. Does that mean all your crypto is lost forever? To safeguard against these unfortunate situations, every wallet has a seed phrase or recovery phrase, a sort of master password that can help you recover your funds in these sorts of scenarios. But all these security and fail-safe precautions make setting up and using a wallet, especially a hardware wallet, very user-unfriendly. For example, take a look at two of the most popular hardware wallets out there. This is how you set up your PIN on a Trezor cold wallet. And then you're going to see numbers here on your Trezor. And then on your home screen, you're going to see dots. And then you're going to select which dot that corresponds with the numbers that you want uh, for your pin code. And this is how you set up a pin on a ledger cold wallet. So you can cycle through numbers like this. If you do make a mistake in this, there actually is a character for that. Once you've entered in your first one, you'll see a backspace here. Did that seem annoying? You're just getting started. Here's how you confirm your 24 word recovery phrase on the ledger. So now this is the tedious part. It's gonna ask you to enter in those words one by one, uh, and you can only type in one letter at a time. So on one hand, it's important to own possession of your crypto, but on the other hand, it's very inconvenient. And this is where Block tries to provide a solution. In June 2021, Jack Dorsey, the former CEO of Twitter and current CEO of Block, formerly known as Square, shared about Block's initial interest in building a hardware wallet for Bitcoin. In a tweet thread, he mentioned some guiding philosophies. One is that Bitcoin is for everyone and should be able to be self-custodied, meaning you can hold your Bitcoin yourself and not have someone like an exchange hold it for you. Two, because it's for everyone, it should be very user-friendly. A month later, it was announced that they would pursue building a hardware wallet. Since then, they've been building the wallet out in the open, gathering feedback and sharing updates as they make decisions. And just recently, they shared what appears to be a prototype of what their hardware wallet will look like. Immediately, you can see this is an utterly unique type of hardware wallet. And in fact, the atypical form factor hints at the very different approach that Block is taking from other hardware wallets. Let's look at some of the unique features. One, the USB-C port. Though this looks standard, it's quite different. Whereas other wallets have a USB port to connect to a device so you can send crypto, Block's USB port is used strictly for charging. To send crypto, Block's wallet uses NFC, or near field communication technology, instead of a cable to connect to their complementing mobile app. Number two, fingerprint reader. Instead of having to memorize yet another pin and punch it in through tiny buttons, Block employs a fingerprint reader as the primary way to verify ownership. 
Since hardware wallets are typically used for longer term storage and get infrequent use, it can be easy to forget your PIN. There are many stories of people who have forgotten their PIN and lost all their money. Some have even lost millions of dollars. That said, Block also allows an alternative PIN setup for those who need or prefer that method. Feature 3. No display. The hardware device is actually just one element of Block's wallet. Block will also have a paired mobile hot wallet. This allows Block to get rid of the display altogether, making the hardware wallet more affordable so it can be accessible for all. To verify larger transactions from cold storage, you'll need two signatures, one which would be your fingerprint from your hardware device and another from the NFC connected mobile app. Smaller transactions under a certain user-defined threshold, however, will be able to be done with just the mobile app. The push for striking a balance of accessibility, simplicity, and security is evident with Block's displayless, multi-signature fingerprint wallet. But Block isn't just trying to make a slightly nicer hardware wallet. Block is trying to create a world where everyone in it can have their own secure bank vault in a pocket-sized device and where smaller day-to-day -day Bitcoin transactions via a mobile app become more normal than swiping credit cards. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more breakdowns on tech innovation, make sure to subscribe to this channel. We're considering building a um, non-custodial hardware wallet. We just want to take it to the next level.